Hello, welcome to Art with Anna. Um, today we are going to learn about another artist that is still alive today. Um, his name is Mark Bradford and he is from South Central LA. Um, that will be important in our project today. And I'll talk a little bit more about where he's from. Um, he is mostly known for his um, kind of stacked paper, layered paper art, as well as his um, mixed media artwork. So we will um, we'll look at that today and um, just talk a little bit about his life because he's also someone who's super cool. But first, as always, we need to take some time to grab our supplies. So let's grab those and we will get going with our art and learning about our artists. Okay. All right, things we will need are a white sheet of paper, scrap sheets of construction paper, tissue paper, black and white paint, something to use as a palette, glue, paintbrush, scissors, black string, and a magazine with lots of pictures. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Mark Bradford's artwork um, piece that we'll be focusing on today. We'll be focusing on a piece called No Time to Expand the Sea. It's a mixed media art piece, which we've talked about before, meaning it's made of quite a few materials. It's not just painting or not just sculpture, um, not just pencil drawing. It's kind of a mixture of a bunch of different things. Um, when we look at this mixed media piece, um, what you can see is it kind of looks like, to me, broken glass. Um, but to Mark Bradford, it's meant to look a little bit like a map, which I think you can see with the black lines that kind of come out from a central point. Um, what inspired him to make this painting was actually reading about explorers from the 16th and 17th centuries. Um, these explorers made maps of their journeys, but they included um, sea monsters that aren't real in these maps. They draw pictures of things that look like half walruses and half dolphins and say like, this is really deadly, don't go over here. And it was a way to deter other explorers from going on that path if they thought that they were on to explore something really cool. Um, a lot of these explorers did go to different lands and conquer them. So um, there's just a lot, of, a lot in this piece about travelers who are going and conquering land that's not theirs and making fear of the unknown for other people who could soon follow, um, like those sea monsters. So um, Mark Bradford talks a lot about what a sea monster nowadays could mean, something that we're afraid of simply because we don't know anything about it, or something that people stir up more fear about than there actually needs to be. And he claims that his hometown, South Central LA, is a sea monster. It's a place that is predominantly um, Latino and black people. I think it's 1.8% white and then 87% Latino, it's like 20 some percent is um, a black, the black community. So it was probably black for a long time from like the 40s to the 90s and then it was, became more of a Latino community after the 90s. Um, but it's a place that people can be scared of because they don't know a lot of people of color maybe. Um, so going to a place like that can stir up more fear than um, going to a place that's mostly white people. So he considers his hometown one of those sea monsters, those things that um, people came and looked at and didn't fully understand, so they decided was scary. Um, and made up to be more scary than it actually is. So 
that's the art piece we'll be working on today, making something very similar to that. Um, while we're making the art, I will also be talking about another art piece of his that also references, references his um, hometown of South Central LA. So I think something to learn here is that our experience and where we grow up can really influence us and our artwork. So um, we'll keep that in mind while making this art piece also. But first, let's grab out our white sheet of paper and our scraps of construction paper. That'll be our first move. So let's grab those out and some glue. All right, so we have our white piece of paper. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just make a collage out of our um, scraps of construction paper. So you can choose to cut your construction paper. Um, you can choose to rip it, but we just want random shapes, kind of random colors. Um, you can choose one that reminds you of your surroundings. Um, like if we were at Ben's Hope, green reminds me of Benjamin's Hope. A, because the land around is so green, but also our logo is green. Um, orange does too, because a lot of the chairs are orange. So green and orange kind of remind me of Ben's Hope. So I'll start with those two colors. Um, if you think of Holland and the Dutch, maybe red, white, and blue, or America, red, white, and blue would inspire you. Um, but I'm going to use green and orange. So I am just going to rip some and cut some different shapes that I want to use around my white sheet of paper and I'm gonna glue those down. So I will have you do the same once you've come up with a configuration of different shapes and colors that you like on your paper, glue them down and we will start again um, from there. All right, so once you have the configuration of your um, paper, just at random, you are gonna take some of that tissue paper that you have. You wanna find a light color. So I'm gonna use white, it's about the lightest color you can have. Um, I would say this pink, this is, this is too dark. Um, it will work okay, but really we want a lighter color. So maybe a white, maybe a yellow, maybe a really light pink. Um, and we want to cover just big areas, but um, at random also, still in collage style. So I'm gonna tear it um, up into pieces. And I really do wanna cover a lot of my paper with this light tissue paper, but not all of it. You want some like pots of the bright color of your construction paper. And then once you find a placement you like, go ahead and glue that down. So while you're working on that, we can talk a little bit about um, Mark Bradford's life and then another piece of artwork that he also made that we won't make today, but just um, something to talk about. So a big part of Mark Bradford, um, his life and just who he is as a person is giving back to his community. So he actually runs a place called Art and Practice. It's a foundation in South Central LA. Um, and this serves as an arts area. Um, there's a huge exhibition there. You can also um, learn, get tutoring and mentoring, also some therapy there. So it's just a way for him to get back to his community since he has some fame now um, and the means to do so. So I think that's something that's really, really cool about him. So he'd love to just educate his community more. Um, the other artwork that I want to look at is this one. All right, so South Central um, LA, we talked a little bit about before. That was also the... Um, location of the LA race riots that happened in the 90s. And this was where a man named Rodney King was um, beaten by police officers. It was recorded and um, the police officers were acquitted and not charged with any crimes. So um, there were a bunch of riots and the piece here, Rebuild um, South Central, is... Um, inspired by a photo that came from that time during those riots. And underneath it says Rebuilt South Central in Spanish too, which is paying a little homage or um, 
trying to bring light to that fact that a lot of the community is Latino. So, um, and this is also something that's dear and close to his heart since he is trying to give back to his community with his foundation. Now, a cool thing about this, well, if you, I mean, that enough is a really cool thing um, about this art project, but also this art project that he did um, is also a collage, kind of like we're doing today, but the collage is made out of all ads and billboards and signs that are all like taped up in big cities that you see all the time. Like if you're in New York or in Chicago, you'll see these ads um, kind of taped up on posts and walls and construction sites. So he took a down a bunch of those ads and posters um, from, from South LA, South Central LA. Um, and so all the paper that's behind this collage is from the city is exactly those. So I thought that was a very interesting. He kind of whitewashes over them, which is what we're trying to do with our um, light color tissue paper is kind of make it look like it's a little whitewashed. Um, but he also uses like magazines um, from that area too as things that are in his collages. So we'll be taking a magazine, parts of a magazine, and just cutting out maybe letters or pictures that you like and we will also put those down and we'll do another layer of light colored tissue um, and we'll move on to the next step after that. So I'll meet you when we're done gluing down some pictures for magazines. All right, so I've come up with some um, different pictures from magazines and ads that I wanted to add to my collage. So I have some corn, kind of reminds me of Ben's Hope in Michigan in general, like some phrases, visions of earth, true north, um, just things from ads in the magazine that I have um, instead of grabbing ads off the street that I am going to um, glue over top my of my layer my latest layer which was tissue paper um, and I'll it's kind of collage style again and then again I'm going to cover most of my piece of paper with more light colored tissue paper so I'm going to glue down first my um, ads from my magazines and then I will glue down over top of it more light colored tissue paper. Okay so right now this is where I'm at. I've glued down the things from the magazines that I chose and now I'm going to add my white tissue paper over top most of it. Um, but first I'm actually going to paint a lot of gray on before my tissue paper goes over top. So skipped that step when I was explaining earlier. So I'm going to make some gray paint out of black and white that I have. Um, any shade of gray that you want is fine. I'm going to choose kind of a mid gray and just do random painting of it all over and then I'm going to put my tissue paper on top of that. All right, so I have mixed a good gray color here. Now I'm going to go over my magazine with just some gray. You can do as little or as much as you want. I'm going to cover a lot of the canvas just because um, that's a prime kind of the main color it seems that's in um, Mark Bradford's paintings. So in the painting you can see kind of like almost starbursts of um, black lines and beneath them is a lot of gray. So I'm kind of doing like a starburst um, or fan style of painting over here. I'm gonna do another one over here. You don't have to do that by any means. You can just paint gray wherever you'd like. Um, this is kind of informing where I'm going to put my black lines eventually. So there's my paper and there is all the gray that I have on it. Now I'm going to cover it with white tissue paper, mostly. All right, so this is what I'm left with. Just some kind of whitewashed um, colors, lots of layers. Um, the last step for this project is going to be to cut out some black pieces of string, just in various lengths is fine. Um, and we're going to glue down in kind of a starburst pattern. So kind of like sun rays coming out, we're going to glue down some of this string. Um, you can do that in multiple areas, so I'm thinking about doing some up here, maybe a smaller one up here, and a larger one down here, just because that's how I painted my area. But really, 
any which way is fine. You can do, choose one starburst, you can do four starbursts, whichever you'd like to do. So this is kind of my end product. I think the last thing I'm going to do is take some of my paint. Again, I have gray paint. And I'm going to just kind of paint between some areas. A little bit. And I'm also going to cover just a few more areas in that tissue paper. It's kind of like our version of whitewashing. But you could also do with paint um, if you want to get a little bit of white paint in your palette. I just have the gray mixed right now. But we do have white paint with us. Um, we can paint some white over top a little bit and then put some of our tissue paper over top. So this is how it's looking with just the white tissue paper over top, which I really like. I like all the texture. Um, that does remind me of Mark Bradford's work, the texture. Um, I am going in with just some white paint. And I'm going to just go in next to some of the strings and put some white down there. Um, maybe over top a little bit too. We can do it up here too, over the tissue paper a little more. That. And then lastly, we'll do a little bit over here. And then that's it. That's our final product. It's very mixed media, lots of texture, a lot like Mark Bradford's work. I've got kind of his signature lines um, that some people say look like um, streets from a map. Um, we know this is more of like a map from the sea. That's where he has inspiration for this. Some people think they look like veins, but he does a lot of this kind of line work. Um, he doesn't use string, but that's what we use to make this sort of texture. And I think it looks really great. So I hope you learned a lot about Mark Bradford today. Um, maybe a little bit too about uh, South Central LA. Um, there's just cool people out there doing cool things for their communities. And I think that those are the people we need to highlight right now. And um, so I hope you check out Mark Bradford and I hope you check out his um, Art and Practice Foundation. And until then, here is our own piece. Our own Mark Bradford's. So thanks for tuning in today, guys. Um, I hope you had a lot of fun. This is a little different than what we've been doing. We've done just a lot of painting. Um, so this is, I think, a fun change. And um, I just hope you guys have a good week. I will see you next week with more artwork to do then. And um, until then, goodbye. <laughs>